Hey, welcome to Gold Scratch. So one of the things that we've done in previous videos is try to bust, bust myths. What the heck is a myth? A myth is kind of a belief that gets passed on person to person, sometimes generation to generation, and people believe it just because somebody tells them. So uh, if you watch my video I made at Forsyth College, one of the main points I made to the students was uh, make sure you understand it. Never believe anything just because somebody tells you, even if it's Gold's Garage that tells you. Look at the facts, do your own research, do your homework, understand it. If you understand why something is supposed to be that way, then you own it. If you just believe it because somebody told you, uh, there's a good chance it may not be true. So the one we're starting with today, this is an ARP main bearing stud. This is an OEM main bearing bolt. So one of the popular myths is the standard torque for the, for both the ARP stud, according to ARP, or the bolt, according to GM, is 80 foot-pounds. So a popular myth is when you torque the ARP stud using ARP lube, it's tighter than when you, the 80 foot-pounds, it's tighter than when you torque the OEM bolt. Or it has more clamping force or holds the bearing tighter or makes your block stiffer or a whole bunch of other things that many people believe that's why you need to use ARP. So what we're going to do today is going to give you not mythical information but scientific information that will let you make your own decision whether that's true. I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to show you on a graphical chart on my whiteboard and we're actually going to Use this old engine as an example. I got the main bearing cap for it, and I'm going to torque it and measure the bearing clearance with the standard bolt. And then I'm going to remove that and install an ARP stud. And I'm going to torque it and use the same 80 foot pounds torque that's specified by ARP on the same application. And I'm going to measure the clearance with the main bolt from GM and the stud and let's see if it changes. Because this is a pretty broadly believed myth. My machine shop even believes it. They have told me when I want to have an engine line board, I need to make sure if I'm going to have, use ARP bolts that the ARP are, bolts are installed. Uh, ARP believes it because, and Mike's going to put a screenshot of that up there. Uh, in the ARP instructions, it says if you replace your main bolts with ERP bolts, you need to recheck all your clearances. So that's what inspired me to do this video. This is kind of a follow-up on Tony Guzzo's engine. So I made a, a deal, a video before saying that uh, the ARP, the bolts that, that Tony had provided to me for uh, to, lo to locate or install the windage tray were too long. And I already covered all this. I tried to modify them by shortening them and then extending the thread. And when I did that, I weakened them so I couldn't use them. So Tony bought an ARP stud kit. So if you follow the belief that I just said, you have to recheck all your clearances, I got to take this engine completely back apart because you need the crankshaft out. If you check clearances, using micrometers and dial bore gauges, you need the crankshaft out of the engine in order to check that clearance. I sure don't want to do that. So that's what inspired uh, me to make this video. I have, while we're looking at it, I have installed the studs in Tony's engine. I've installed only five. It comes with 10 studs. I installed only the ones I need to locate the windage tray. I did not remove or install the other ones. So that's going to create a little controversy. I don't know, I must be a little bit masochistic or something because uh, I'm sure some people are going to take offense to that. But I'm not going to disturb the other ones because there's no reason to. And I'm going to prove to you why there isn't. However, I did run into something. The, the stud kit that Tony bought, it's the only one available from ARP. The studs are too long also, just like the bolts were too long. So I had to use three uh, washers, but they're hardened washers, they're ARP washers, uh, in order to get enough thread engagement so that I could torque it properly. So there are three washers, so I had to steal the washers 
from the other five and then steal some. Uh, fortunately, I have uh, ARP bowl kits, partial kits sitting around. Let me make a statement about that. <clears throat> ARP makes a beautiful product. It does everything that they say it can do. Uh, the manufacturing process is second to none. That is not a problem. Uh, the issue is here's how it works in, in business. Marketing determines a need for something, and then they go to engineering and they design, as engineering, design a solution. And engineering hands it on to manufacturing to manufacture it economically. And then manufacturing hands it back to marketing to sell it. Marketers will tell you anything to get you to buy their products. And that's what you have to watch out for. I've made that statement many times before in marketing. That's why you have to do your own, own homework and understand what you're doing. So that's what happened with Tony's, Tony's engine. It's going to be okay. It's got five ARP studs and five original OEM studs. And I'm going to show you why. In demonstration, we're going to do, it's called design of experiments. And we're going to document it all. I have the, uh, the date on here, what we're doing. I'm going to measure the crankshaft diameter. And then I'm going to transfer that to a dial bore gauge. And I'm going to measure the clearance with the OEM bolts. And I'm going to remove the OEM bolts, install the ARP bolts, and remeasure it. And let you see what the difference is. And you can decide for yourself. So um, let's go ahead and do that next. So this is just an old block that I have. And uh, but this is the main cap off it. This is just the way it came. So I'm going to install, first of all, uh, the uh, OEM bolts. So a point to make about the OEM bolts in any bolting situation, you want to make sure your threads are nice and clean. I run these under a wire, uh, wire wheel uh, extensively to make sure they're clean. Uh, a lot of guys run a tap or, or a thread chaser in there before they do it. Um, but you want to make sure that because one of the things that uh, ARP claims, and, and it's, it is factual, uh, that the 80 or 90 percent of all the, all the torque that goes into tightening a bolt goes into friction. And therefore, the ARP lube, especially AR, I call it ARP's secret sauce, goes into taking that friction away or taking more of that friction away. And that's going to lead to, to my tip of the day because uh, while we're speaking about that, ARP has a great website. They have lots of technical information on that website. I encourage you, if you want to understand all this, to uh, read it. And <clears throat> one of the things they show, there's a graph in there where they, the theme of it is torque scatter. And what that means is, what they're claiming, and they, and I'm sure that's factual. I'm sure they've done scientific, you know, laboratory type experiments to prove that. When you take a, a brand new bolt and you torque it to spec using oil or molly or something, you won't get the full torque uh, stretch in the bolt that you want. Whereas with an ARP lubricant and an ARP thread, an ARP bolt, you will get more stretch and you will be closer. The point of it is, though in their own information in that graph. There's a nice graph in the, on their website. After seven or eight uh, repetitions of torquing, uh, molly and oil has the same stretch, the same stress, the same torque as the ARP bolt does. So that's why you need to have good threads. So that's going to lead to my tip of the day. I'm going to come back to that at the end. So I've already cleaned the threads up. Just to show that, I'm going to just run these bolts up and down a few times. Okay, so uh, if you get any hang-ups doing that, then you got more friction. So before I even get to that point, I'll make another another point uh, that maybe help you understand this. There's a law. Newton's law of conservation of energy says energy can be cannot be created or destroyed, but may change its form. So when you take and torque any bolt to 80, let's say we're using this example, 80 foot pounds, 
uh, that imparts the same amount of force, the same amount of stress, the same amount of clamping force into that bolt and into whatever it's bolting, uh, whether it's a grade 2 bolt, grade 5 bolt, grade 8 bolt, or a 200,000 PSI ARP bolt, because energy cannot be created or destroyed. The amount of torque goes into that bolt is a function of how much energy you take to torque it. The only variable is friction. And that's where the ARP lube comes in. So, of course, we're going to use the lube in this test. So I'm going to install the main bearing cap for you. Make sure I get it facing in the right direction. It's just an old bearing. It's just the way, actually, I, I didn't have two. I only had a couple top bearings. So I stole the bottom one out of the top and uh, made it into a top bearing by... Um, by uh, grinding off the little tab. So let's tighten that up. And with the stock bolts, just with regular just engine oil, okay? Same thing I use for everything else. Snug it up. Okay. Now we're going to torque it to 80 foot-pounds. And this oil like this 80 foot pounds on my torque wrench. And we're going to leave that torque wrench exactly there for the ARP test. So when you're torquing, also another point uh, to make is I need to find when you're torquing, uh, static friction is more than moving friction. So you don't want to make it in little bit baby increments. You want to make a good swing at it. Because if you stop and try to start again, it'll take more friction to get going again. So basically, you get it snug down, okay? And then we go to full torque on the next pull. Okay, one time. That's all it takes. Now, we're going to see what bearing clearance we got. So I have to move, put my back to you there for a second. I'm sorry, I got to... I've got to lay the crankshaft down so I can take the dimension of it. I had a video earlier where the crankshaft was already laying down and somebody uh, made a comment that it's going to warp if you do that. And he's right if you do that for a long, long time. But it's always better to have it standing up. That's the standard way. So this is number one main bearing journal on this crankshaft. Just the way it came. So let's just check that. I've already got it close. Okay. So we'll lock the micrometer, put it in my micrometer vise. Zero the dial bore indicator. You can see it's right on zero. Whoop, oh, hang on. A little bit tedious. You've got to play around with a little bit. In any case, now we're going to leave the dial bore gauge here for both tests. So we're not going to change them. We're not going to recheck it. Make sure that I can prove to you that we're taking using exactly the same dimension. So Next, we're going to find out how much clearance it has. Now, I'm going to have to walk in front of you, Alec, to get there. Sorry about that. And I'm going to have to come back because you're not going to be able to see the gauge. Sorry. You're going to have to come around here to see the gauge. Sorry about that. So let's see how much clearance we got. And we have... Just a little over 3,000, 3,032, I would call that, of clearance with factory bolts, okay? So next, we're going to remove them. The ARP bolts are 11 sixteenths, and the factory ones are 5 eighths. That's why I'm getting a little bit messed up here, but uh, we'll figure that out. 
Let's write it down. Document, document. So the clearance with uh, air with the OEM bolts 0032 0032. Okay. So back to I keep stealing uh, sockets here. Now we'll install the ARP bolts. So there's already lots of uh, ARP secret sauce on them, but I will put more on before I do the test. I've already mocked this up before. So as you know, when you install an ARP stud, I'd say ARP bolts a stud, obviously. Okay, you just put it in hand tight. Okay, do not torque the stud. A little bit tighter there, but it's... Okay, because I'm there, that's why I'm there. Okay, so hand tight. So I'm gonna take the, the nuts off. And I'm going to put more ARP lube on them to make sure that uh, we give them a, the best chance we can. Okay. So if you buy an ARP kit, you get a little envelope with ARP stuff. Once, this, once again, I think I've said this, I use ARP bolts a lot for certain applications. They're a great product. This is definitely not knock on ARP whatsoever. It was exactly what they say they can do. And I'm going to put some secret sauce on the, on the nut and on the bolt. Put some more on there. And ARP washers, of course, the kit comes with washers and you should always use the washers. Friction between two hard surfaces is less than the friction between hard and soft surfaces. So if you use, um, let me put a little more on there just to make sure. Use hard washers, you'll have less friction because where's the friction? The friction's in the threads, uh, between the threads of the nut and the bolt and on the surface where the, where the bolt is. Uh, is is tightening where the nut is tightening sorry okay so you can just run that down with that that way got to change the socket on my torque wrench because we're back to the 11 16ths again there we are. this is get it snugged up Okay, do the same thing. 80 foot pounds, we didn't move anything. Okay. ARP secret sauce is very messy. And I used to think it was a molly, some, some kind, but I just, when I make a video, I try to do my homework. I just went back and looked at their website and they claim it's not Molly. So I sure don't know what it is. Probably no one else does unless you work for them. So here's our dial bore gauge. We haven't touched it. You're going to have to come around again, Alec, so we can see what results we get. Zero, zero, three, two. Exactly the same. You can read the gauge for yourself. There you go. In the same place. I put it in the same place here. 0032. So, what did I learn from that? I learned that I don't have to take Tony's engine all back apart and recheck all the clearances because 
they're going to be the same. And if there is any variation, once again, because of the loop compared to a new uh, thread, uh, then uh, that will that will get basically solved by uh, in, 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 in by more applications. So stumble there. Sorry about that. So what I conclude from that. So ARP zero zero three two. And for what it's worth, uh, this is a video. I've done this before, just to prove it to myself. Um, and it makes sense because here's the point. Let's go, let's go to our graph. And I, I found my little uh, pointer, by the way. Before I forget, we're getting near the end. So please like and subscribe. Well, I still got you watching. Uh, if you're still watching, hope you're finding it interesting. So I found my little little laser pointer. I had, I had a school here for a while teaching kids who are getting to the age where they're going to have a driver's license, kind of about how to deal with driving a car and taking care of a car. Anyway, so I had this in my drawer for a long time. I forgot all about it. So we're going to use it today. So this is a stress strain gauge or stress strain diagram. And uh, I made a similar thing when I made the presentation at uh, Foresight College. Every, uh, every material, in this case, we're talking about carbon steel, alloy carbon steel. Typically, the, the bolts have chrome moly in them. There's not much difference between the, the, the bolt that torques your engine together and the material in the connecting rod, by the way. So it's pretty close. So that, the slope of that line is determined by Two points in the line, 80 foot pounds. I just put 80 foot pounds and the calculated stretch that will give me is about 8,000 of an inch. So when you plot that line and draw it back to zero, that gives you the slope of the line. So an AR, a, a standard bolt, it says, torque to 80 foot pounds. The way it was designed by the GM engineers and, and pretty similar really with all manufacturers back in the day and I got my little deal here but I'm not using it so I'm going to use it so that was about 75 percent of the yield point so this line continues to go up a uh, bolt is like a spring it'll stretch when you torque it and it'll go back to its original length when you stop when you back it off until it gets to what's called the yield point and if you're familiar with uh, torque to yield bolts and LS's and the modern engines I think the 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 uh, um, Coyote engine and the Hemi engine use the same uh, uh, same type of deal. So they are torquing into the yield point, but we're not. This is the design, so it's 75%. So that's the OEM bolt. That's the yield point of OEM bolt. Is the ARP bolt stronger? Yes, it is stronger. The ARP bolt, you could torque it this far before it gets to the yield point. So this is 80 foot pounds. This is probably 100 foot pounds before the 110 foot pounds before the OEM bolt would start to fail. And this is probably 100, and, that's 80, that's probably 150, 160 pounds, foot pounds before it fails. I'm using torque here. You can convert that torque to stress. The stress in the bolts probably uh, in that, that 7 16 bolt, probably 10, 12,000 PSI, something like that. Uh, or 12,000 pounds, sorry, okay. So the point is the ARP bolt is stronger, no question about that. The other point is the limitation of the design of any connection isn't just dependent on the bolts. It depends also on what you're bolting. So if you were to take an ARP bolt and torque it to its limitation, okay, or even 75% of its limitation, you would in fact, probably uh, distort the cap and reduce clearance and have a bad day because that's what could happen. And that's why uh, what ARP does give you, if you look at my, I use my little deal here that I found. Okay, what I is give you is a larger safety factor between where it's bolted at 80 foot pounds, it probably can take 150 foot pounds. This point in the graph is called ultimate tensile strength, ultimate tensile strength, or tensile strength. So marketing for fasteners, 
you look at all the commercial literature, the number they give you is called tensile strength. And it's a nice number for marketing, but you don't want to be going there because that's the point at which the bolt fails catastrophically, okay? The stretch continues to go, the torque comes down until it fails completely and totally fails. So you don't want to be going there. This is the area you're concerned about. The stock bolt is 80%, is 75% of the, of the yield point. And if you're using an ARP bolt, you do have a larger safety factor. The ARP bolt's not gonna fail, guaranteed it's a great product, but the OEM bolt's not gonna fail either. That's my point. So hope you found that interesting. Remember, think it through yourself. If you understand it, you own it for life. And so take time to do that rather than just believe something somebody tells you, even if it's cold scratch. So I promised the tip of the day, and here it is. Going back to when I was describing this, and it'd be helpful if you go on the ERP website and look at their, uh, under their tech uh, information, technical information, uh, what they call torque scatter. And what they uh, show in, that, in their scientific experiment is that if you take a new bolt, and don't use ARP lube. Uh, you won't get a very good stretch on the first time or the second time, but by five or six times, you will get pretty much 100% of the stretch and 100% of the stress that you're trying to accomplish. The idea of torquing a fastener, by the way, is to put more force between these two surfaces than they're ever going to see when the engine's in operation. As long as that's true, the bolt doesn't see anything. It's never going to fatigue. It'll last a lifetime. So if you remember that, so tip of the day, if you're installing new bolts and you're just using oil or whatever, torque it, untorque it, torque it, untorque it five or six times. And if you look at the ARP information, you will have the same amount of stretch as they would with the ARP secret sauce. Or you could just use the ARP lube. I guess that's the other part of it. Uh, that's really the point of that. What does that do? The two surfaces rubbing together, uh, if you torque them, they're under a lot of stress. So they kind of get to know each other. They kind of soften, grind off the sharp corners, etc. They get smoother and that reduces the coefficient of friction between those two surfaces. And each time you torque it, uh, you will get uh, a, a better result in terms of stress in the bolt, elongation and, and uh, clamping force. So don't worry about fatiguing the bolt. Its fatigue life is somewhere around a million torques if you're within spec. So you're not going to wear, you'll wear yourself out long before you wear the bolt out. Well, another tip of the day, I made a video a while ago, pretty recently about a selection process for a camshaft, how to break stuff down into individual parts. And I used a spreadsheet, and Mike did put a spreadsheet up in that video, how to select the camshaft. And this is the corrected spreadsheet. And I made a pretty big mistake, and I'm surprised. I got caught by a couple of viewers who said, your numbers don't add up. And sure enough, they sure don't add up. So the mistake I made was I had three or four columns to start with, and the first uh, this is an Excel spreadsheet for those that use Excel. And I added another three columns onto it. Uh, at the end here, I'll just use my finger here, these three columns here. And when I added them up, I didn't tell Excel to use the other three columns. That's how I made the mistake. Now that can happen, but I went through the whole video and explained it and the numbers don't make sense because they don't add up. Now, the point of that video, by the way, was not to even make the camshaft selection, but to show you the process. And ironically, the winner is still the winner, even though the numbers are different, but it doesn't matter. The whole idea was to show the process. But I'm surprised a couple of people caught my uh, mistake and politely told me about it. I'm surprised I didn't get hammered, to be honest with you. You can't even add up or five numbers together. Anyway, you make a mistake, you fess up to it, and you fix it, and clarify it, and then you move on. That's what we're trying to do. Thanks for watching Gold Scratch.